All right, tonight we're going to be in Romans chapter 8 again. This is a very, very rich chapter, and we've been here for several, several weeks. So we're going to delve in with it. It begins trying to get the mind of the believer to wrap itself around that there is therefore right now no condemnation to those of us who are in Christ Jesus. And the problem is, who walk not after the flesh. Our problem is there is condemnation because we don't walk after the flesh. I'm saying there is condemnation because we are walking after the flesh, which is after our feelings, because we do not feel that we are where in Christ. Because when you are baptized into Christ, uh, your feelings have nothing to do with it. Everything that you have is based on faith, which comes by hearing the word of God rightly divided. So our problem is that we have a lot of believers that go to the church, always asking for forgiveness of sins, always thinking that God is mad at me, always thinking that they're condemned. Why? Because they have the burden of the law on their hearts. And when you have the burden of the law on you, there is nothing in that message except condemnation. The law was given, Romans chapter 3, verse 19, that to stop every person's mouth so that it would be without alibi, so that you would be without alibi, I would be without alibi, uh, bishops, pastors, popes, cardinals, everybody in the religious hierarchy system would be without an alibi, and that all of us would become what? Saved? No guilty before God. The law was given to make you guilty before God. The law was given to show you that you did not measure up. The law was given to show you that you fell short of the standards of God's righteousness, holiness, sanctification, okay? The law showed you that you were impure, unpure, and that you were born of a ruined seed, the law had nothing for you but condemnation, and that's what we were raised with, because we were taught that Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And we were taught, erroneously, erroneously, that the commandments of the Lord are the Ten Commandments. No, the Ten Commandments is the law, which is called the ministry, or the menstruation in the King James Bible, of condemnation. There was nothing in the law that set you free from sin. The law made you conscious of sin. The new covenant was given to you so that the Bible says, when you're purged by the blood of Jesus, the worshipers once purged will have how much consciousness of sin? It says in Hebrews that the worshipers once purged would have no more consciousness of sin. Why? Because the consciousness of sin gives you the consciousness of what? Condemnation. And the Bible says when Christ washes away your sins, he does that with his own blood to you. There is, and for you, there is therefore right now no condemnation because you are where? In Christ Jesus. And the Bible states in 1 John, in whom there is no sin. But when we walk by feelings, there is plenty of condemnation. Why? Because we have all been set up in our youth to fail. In our youth, you may have been an overweight kid. In your youth, you may have been ugly. In your youth, you may have had a problem. And what do kids do with each other when they find a problem? They exploit that problem. They call you by the name of that problem. They heap condemnation upon you on that problem. So we come out of our youth with a whole lot of issues that we generally don't get resolved. And we just walk through life limping because of the uh, past or the things of our youth. So until you get your mind renewed with what Christ has, that Christ has set you free, you'll continue to think carnally. What does carnally mean? Carnal means flesh. Carnal also means natural, the natural mind, or carnally. You don't think naturally of yourself. The Bible tells us to let this mind be in you, 
that was also in Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus did not have a natural mind. Christ Jesus' mind was the mind of God. And God is a what? God is a spirit. So Christ Jesus' mind is a spiritual mind. And the mind of Christ is to be in us. Now, how do you get the mind of Christ in you? The mind of Christ is in you by one and only one reason. The mind of Christ is in you if you have the thoughts of Christ. Minds contain what? Thoughts. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So the Bible tells us that our hearts are what? Deceitful and desperately wicked. Deceitful means what? Tricky. To deceive someone is to be deceitful toward that person. So a lot of people are going to be standing before God thinking that they're going to go into heaven and they'll hear the words, depart from me, you cursed, I never knew you. Why am I cursed? The Bible says, cursed be the person who continues not in all things written in the law. And if you are under the law and you didn't continue in all things, then you are cursed of God because the law is not good news. The good news comes through the new covenant. The good news is only coming through the new covenant. What is the good news? The good news is that Jesus Christ died to take you out from under the guilt and condemnation of sin. How did he do that? By washing away your sins, past, present, and future, with his own blood. Okay? When he washed away your sins, past, present, and future, with his own blood, now you can stand before him and be what? And be counted righteous. What does righteous mean? Righteous means in right standing with God. Now, understand this. If you were sitting in a chair outside and at a picnic and a fly was to fly in your uh, face, what would you do automatically? Get swatted. Why? Because it's against your nature to have flies in your face. It's just an automatic reflex. You just swat it. The same is with God. God cannot have sin in his presence. If he has sin in his presence, what does he do? He swats it. He gets rid of it. Get the hints. And get away from it. He cannot have sin in his presence. So what does he do to bring you and I, sinners, into his presence? The way he gets us into his presence is by what? Having us believe, having us please him. Is he pleased with us when we do good things? When we help little old ladies cross the street, help someone pay their bill, help this and help that and help the other. The Bible says our righteousnesses in those areas to him is like a filthy rag, like the fly. Get that away from me. He does. The Bible says he receives no rewards of men. So no matter how much you're trying to give him, how much you're trying to please him, how much you put in the offering plate, none of that pleases him. It pleases the pastor. It pleases the deacon board. It pleases the church. It doesn't please what? God, unless it's what? Offered by faith. And when you offer something by faith, the amount doesn't matter. He's looking at the what? Heart. He's going to look at the heart. So when you are doing these things, remember, God is not letting you into heaven based upon your doing. And God's not keeping you out of heaven based upon what you stopped doing. Because your whole being is evil. What did Jesus say? You being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children. Evil? Listen to what he says. He didn't say you doing evil. Evil is your being. If you are a human being, Jesus Christ says you are evil by what? Nature. What nature made you evil? Because I don't see myself as evil. You know? I would tell Christ I'm not evil. Why is that? Because our nature is anti-Christ, anti-the anointed one. Our nature sees through its fleshly carnal mind, and we see through a glass darkly. We don't see truth, because if we started seeing truth of what we are, we wouldn't even believe that Christ's blood could save us. If we really could see how far we were in sin. If we could really see the exceeding sinfulness of sin that Christ has saved us from, 
we would say it's impossible for us to be saved, even by the death, blood, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And to that point, because of his death, blood, and resurrection, and you, by faith, believing that his death, blood, and resurrection appease God for all of your lifetime sins, past, present, and the ones you're going to do tomorrow that's going to get you into heaven, God gives that sacrifice of Jesus Christ is going to bring you to him that made you holy, that made you righteous, that sanctified you, meaning separated you from your sins because he washed you from your sins with his own blood. All of the sacrifice of Christ gave the holy God that appeased the holy God, him laying down his life for you. Do you know what God counts that? You think it's A plus? No. A B? No. A C? No. A D? No. All that Christ did for you in his death, blood, and resurrection gave you, if God was to give you a grade, a D minus. Why is that? Because it scarcely got you in. What does the scripture state? If the righteous scarcely be saved by the shed blood of the Messiah, by his resurrection from the dead, by him presenting you faultless and holy before his presence with exceeding great joy. That only gave you a D minus before God. That lets you know how stringently holy he is. And he says what? Be ye holy for I am holy. Our natural man, our carnal mind, which cannot understand the things of the spirit. Why is that? Because the Bible says that natural man receives not the things of the spirit. So when he reads the Bible and Jesus, God says, God, the father says, be ye holy for I am holy. What does the natural mind start doing? Let me get busy in being holy. Let me start doing the good works. Let me start doing this and that. And the other. That makes God what? Angry. Why? Because holiness does not come by your activities in the flesh. As it says in the book of Romans, this chapter, chapter eight, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So when you help little old ladies across the street, you help them buy their groceries, you help them put them away, you help people do these, that, and the other, that's not pleasing God to get you into the kingdom. What's pleasing God, what pleases God to get you into the kingdom? The works of God pleases God to get you into the kingdom. And what is the work of God that gets you into the kingdom? If you will, turn to Romans chapter, not Romans, John chapter six. Jesus was asked, what must we do to work the works of God? And Jesus told these people, these Pharisees who were always trying to deceive him and uh, uh, get him tripped up. He said, what must we do to work the works of God? Let me try to find this real quick here. I believe it's in John chapter 6 or chapter 9. Let me see. Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God. As a matter of fact, when Jesus Christ did his works, they said, your works are of the devil. <laughs> Turn to John chapter 6, verse 28. This is how the natural man, the carnal mind thinks of God. You got to be very careful of the carnal thinking that we have. Why? Because our carnally, to be carnally minded is death. And there's nothing good coming from the carnal mind. Uh, if you go to St. John or Big John, as Pastor Miles would call it, chapter 6, verse 28. <clears throat> Let's get a running start. Jesus says, labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endures unto everlasting life which the son of God shall give unto you for him hath the father sealed. So when we, this past Sunday, ate of that bread, Jesus Christ says, my flesh is what? Meat indeed. This is the body that was given, broken for you. When you partook of the offering of God's son, giving his life in place for you, you were partaking of his flesh, which is meat indeed. Nevertheless, John 6, 28, they said unto Jesus, what shall we do that we might work the works of God and get into the kingdom of heaven? Because our works don't work. So what must we do to be saved by working the works of God? 
And Jesus answered, verse 29, John 6, 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God that you behave for him. Is that what it says? No. This is the work of God. This is coming out of the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the sacrifice of God. This is the work of God that you believe on him whom God has sent into the world to die for your sins. Behold the Lamb of God that does what? Take away the sins of the believer? No. He took away the sins of the world. He saved it. While we were yet sinners, dead in trespasses and sins, we were reconciled unto God through the death of his son. We've been reconciled. The way you get that reconciliation is by receiving the ministry from the word of God of that reconciliation by believing that Christ died for your sins and rose again. Once you believe that good news, that you can't be good enough to go to heaven, why? Because Jesus already said, you being evil know how to give good gifts. So the only thing you got going for you is a good gift you give to your evil children because they're evil as well. The Bible says we are of our father, the who? The devil. And the lust of our father we will do. He was a what from the beginning? A murderer from the beginning. And he abode not where? He abode not in the truth. So when we start talking about letting this mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus, because we go back over to Romans chapter six, chapter six, chapter eight, it says that to be carnally minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But so let's go back over to Romans chapter eight and deal with this carnal mind. The first thing Christ wants us to know is there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Jesus Christ, who walk not after the feelings of the flesh, but after the words of the spirit, because the spirit declared you what? Not condemned. He that believeth is what? Not condemned. When you go over to Big John, you don't have to go there. I'll take you over there myself. Big John chapter three, after it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, 316, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Then it says in verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Christians are walking around with condemnation on them. God didn't even send his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Then John 3, 18 says, he that believeth on him, the works of God, is to believe on him who God has sent to die for their sins and rise again to get them eternal life. He that believeth on him is not condemned. There is therefore now no condemnation. He that believes on Jesus is not what? Condemned. Now your pastor might condemn you. I might condemn you. Your sister, your brother, your boss, and everybody will sit around you may condemn you. But he, before the eyes of God, because of the sacrifice of Jesus, he that believes on Jesus, the Son of God, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. And this is the condemnation that Jesus, the light, came into the world, but men love what? Darkness. Rather than light, why? Because their deeds are evil, okay? You being evil and your deeds are what? Evil, except when it comes to your children. That's one person that you could possibly give your life for. Some people wouldn't die for their wives. Some people wouldn't die for their husbands, but some would die for their children. You being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall the Father give the Holy Ghost unto his children that do what? Ask him. And that's a beautiful thing. The Bible says that that which you receive, keep by the Holy Ghost. And I was like, wow, that's a big statement. That which you receive, keep by what? By you strutting and striving and trying and forging it and putting your willpower for it? No, the work's already been done. The works were finished before the foundation of the world, the Bible says. You keep it by who? 
the Holy Ghost. What does the mind what does the mind of Christ tell you? We're supposed to let this mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus. What does the mind of Christ tell us? The mind of Christ tells us by the apostle Paul that ye are dead and your life is hidden with Christ inside of God. So we're what? We're dead. Have you ever cut a snake's head off? You cut a snake's head off, the body still moves. We have motions of sin in our members. When The Bible says when Christ died upon that cross for our sins, Romans 6, 6, we went over this a few weeks ago, we were crucified with Christ. That's when God got done with us. He said his spirit will not strive with mankind for he is just flesh. When Christ took away the sin of the world, he took away your old human Adamic nature by nailing it to his cross in his sight. We struggle with it every day. A beautiful woman walks by a, a sane man. What does the natural man do? He looks to behold what? Beauty in the eye. How did Eve come into sin? By the eye, the eye gate. When she looked and perceived that the, that the fruit was good for food, did she look and remember that the Lord said, do not eat of this or you will surely die? No, she was going by the what? The flesh, the mind of the flesh, the thoughts of the flesh, which have no room for the thoughts and the mind of Christ, okay? Let's look at Romans chapter 8, verse 6. It tells us very explicitly, for to be carnally minded, carnal, big word, to be naturally minded. What's naturally mind? One plus one is what? Two. That's what the natural mind is. Two plus two is what? Four. We call this truth. No, 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 no. That might be a fact. That's not truth because Jesus took two and fed 5,000. He took five loaves of bread, fed 5,000. So that's not truth, one and one is two, because if that was truth, then Jesus could not have what? Fed the 5,000 with two fishes and five loaves of bread. So there is a higher consciousness out there. And that consciousness is limited by what? The carnal mind, which issues death to the mind of Christ, okay? The Bible tells you to let this mind, these thoughts, be in you that were in Christ Jesus. And then it states the first thought that you were to let be in you that was in Christ Jesus was that Jesus thought it not robbery to be what? Equal with God. What? That's your first thought? Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who did what? Being in the form of God, aren't you in the form of God? Adam was made in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be what? Equal with God. When Jesus Christ redeemed us, guess what he made us? He made us sons of God. The Bible says, now are we the what? Sons of God. Why did they kill Jesus? They said, he said, for I've been healing your sick, raising your dead. For what good work are you stoning me or wanting to stone me? And he, he said, oh, for a good work, we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. For thou being a mere man, makest thyself God. What did Jesus come back and say? Did I not say that ye are gods? but ye shall all die like men. So what is he telling you? We don't know who we are because of what? We have a veil over our face. The Bible tells us that when a Jew reads scripture, the Jew reads scripture with a veil over their face. Okay? They read it with a veil over their face. When we, as born again believers, read scripture, Unfortunately, because we have not renewed our mind, guess what we also do? We read scripture with a, a veil over our face. You say, no, we don't. So, oh, let me let me give you an example, I guess. Take a little, a little detour here. <clears throat> Genesis 
Jesus says in Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Again, who being in the form of God, Adam was made in the image of God, thought it not robbery, first thought in the mind of Christ to be equal with God, but did what? Humbled himself and became a servant. Jesus says, be not the servants of men. So who should you be serving? Can't serve God and mammon. You to be serving God. So how do you let the mind of Christ be in you? Let this mind, this is Paul who said, what I write, if you're spiritual, then you will acknowledge that what I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. So if you're a spiritual person instead of a natural person or a carnal person, then you must agree that this is a command. This is not a suggestion. Paul said, what I write are the commandments of the Lord. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Okay. So how do you let the mind of Christ be in you since you were commanded to let this mind be in you? By letting the thoughts of Christ be where? In your heart. Huh. Sounds easy, doesn't it? But the Bible states in Jeremiah chapter 10 that the heart of the man or woman, or human, is what? Deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. And you're to let the thoughts of Christ be in your heart. So are the thoughts of Christ that desires to be in your heart, that lust to be in your heart, going to be in agreement with your thoughts? Because Jesus says, oh, when somebody smites you, turn the other cheek. That's nowhere in black culture, okay? Our culture is to beat them down. Some cultures take their life, okay? That's not even nowhere in the mind of Christ's thoughts. So if you're going to be obedient to the word of God as a disciple, one who is disciplined to do as Jesus said, why call me Lord and do not the things that I say, many of us can call him Savior, He's my savior. But we always say, my Lord and savior. No, 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 no. You say, he's my savior, not my Lord. Because if you were Lord, guess where you'd be every Sunday in that church, in that pew. Guess we'd be every Wednesday trying to get the word of God. Guess you'd be doing every day, renewing your mind with the word of God. Okay? So a lot of us, we can say he's our savior, but Jesus says, why don't you call me Lord and don't do the things that I say? I am Lord, he says. You must confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead and you will be what? Saved. But Christ, the Bible, Paul commands you to let the mind of Christ be in you. And the Bible says none of us are mind readers of God's mind. The only way you can have the mind of Christ is if the spirit of God dwells in you. Well, the Bible says when you receive Christ as your savior, he came inside of you. You don't feel him. You don't touch him. He's so silent sometimes, you even wonder if you're saved. That's how bad he gets. He can get so quiet when you're going through trial to faith. But he's there. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But the only way you can know what is in a person's mind is to know their words. That's why when people come around you, they don't talk. Everybody is kind of fearful. Like, what's he thinking? What's he thinking? Because if I can hear you talk out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth will speak, and I can nip, and that lets me know where you are, where mentally. Okay. Now, this is what Jesus says in John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said unto them, If a man or woman or human loves me, he will keep my words. So if you love Jesus, you'll do what? Keep his words. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against God because I keep your precepts. I keep your word. If a man loves me or a woman loves me, he or she will keep my words. And listen to this promise. And my father will love him or her. And we will come unto him or her, and make our abode with him or her. Okay? So let me read it together with all these addendums. Jesus answered and said, 
if a man loves me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So if you're going to be a lover of God, you're going to keep his word. I mean, you're going to act according to his word. So whatever activity you're about to do, the word is called a mirror. And the mirror of the word of God should inform you if the act or activity is springing from the thought that would have been in Jesus's mind. So if you're going to do something, the, it's your, the Bible says the word is a mirror. Natural person gets up and looks in the perfect law of liberty and continues therein by looking at the word of God. And when you look at the word of God and you look at your activity, it should be a reflection or an expression of the thought that would be in Jesus's mind. Because a mind is nothing but a collection of thoughts. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Let these thoughts be in you that is in Christ Jesus. I have no condemnation. I've been freed from my sin. I am dead and my life is hidden with Christ in God. And he's given me a new identity. I'm in the body of Christ. I am a sinless being. I am equal with God in the sight of God because of the sacrifice of his son redeemed me unto God as his equal so that I can be united with him. He cannot be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So he's made us equals with him. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. These are all the reflections of the mirror of the mind of Christ that is given unto us. And when we start seeing that our activities are out of alignment with what is reflected in the word, it can be quite embarrassing. I'm going to go commit this sin. The mind of Christ says, do not do that. I love what Brother Glenn said this past week. He brought the word of God just so simplistic. Like, hey, I was doing this. I was selling this. I was uh, gambling here. I was doing this. I was drinking this and this and this. And God said, don't do that no more. No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah, nah, I'm going to get you if you do it. Nah, 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 nah. It's not Christ's way. Don't do that no more. In other words, repent. Repent means what? Simply turn away from that. How can I? This is my, this is my habit. By the Holy Ghost, which is given unto you. Remember, that part of you is dead. Just motions of sins in your members. You're not a part of that anymore. So turn away from that. Let this thought be in you that was in the mind of Christ. And by only allowing the thoughts would, that would be in Christ's heart in your heart, that will transform your character. Be ye transformed by the what? The renewing of your mind. So to let the mind of Christ ruminate in your mind, you do that by allowing the thoughts that would have been in Christ Jesus to be in your heart. For as a man thinks, so is he. So when a man thinks a thought that was in Christ, that is letting the mind of Christ be in you. Sim plain and simple. The problem is that we are, what? In our flesh dwells no good thing. In our flesh, we are of the father of the devil. Although our flesh was crucified with Christ, Romans 6, 6, it's still housed in our body. And it is a murderer. The Bible says, you were of your flesh is of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father, it will do. It was a murderer. Your flesh is a murderer from the beginning. So you, you got to say, what? A, a murderer. Do you know that if you and Jesus Christ, if you could see what you do every day, with Jesus, you would have to be counted as a murderer. What do you mean? I'm a Christian. If you in the flesh, can you imagine this if you were in the flesh? Jesus Christ walks into your room right now. You jump up and get on your knees and, oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise God. Thank you so much. I love you so much. Uh, and do all this talk. What did Christ say? Oh, with their mouth, they show much love, but their hearts are what? Far from me. A lot of people in marriage is like that. Oh, I love you. I love you. Bye. Bye. Hearts far from that person. And in the houses together. Okay. Same with us and Jesus Christ. Oh, we would bow. We'd scrape. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now let's think about this in the spirit. This is how we do it in the spirit. What is God? God is a spirit. Okay. Can you see yourself walking with Jesus? Just like Cain walked with Abel. Let's turn over to Genesis chapter four, verse eight real quick. Genesis, first book of the Bible. 
chapter 4, verse 8. Pull it up here. Again, 4, 8. The Bible says, and Genesis 4, 8, and Cain talked with Abel, his brother. Okay. So what are they doing? When you're talking, you're exchanging what? You're exchanging words. When you're exchanging words, you're exchanging what? Thoughts. Okay. They're just talking, exchanging thoughts by exchanging words. Now, Jesus Christ says, when he's born in your heart, after you believe that he died for your sins and rose again, that I will what? Never leave you nor forsake you. And he is called the word. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelled among us. Okay. Uh, John later on said, we handled the word and talked with it touched it and all this the word became flesh okay so let's say that you and jesus since he's walking in you he's talking to you through his word his word is giving you his thoughts now you tell me what do you tell somebody when you don't want to hear their words anymore what do you tell a person when you don't want to hear their thoughts anymore what do you tell someone when you're tired of them talking? You got it, but you don't want to really agree with it. Tell them to be quiet. Shut up. I don't want to hear it. This is the type of heart that is in a born-again believer who has a carnal mind. What is a carnal mind? A natural mind. Why? Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, the natural man who has the natural mind receives not the things of the spirit for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them for they are spiritually discerned. Okay. So when Jesus Christ spirit speaks to you, his word and your flesh wants to do its own thing. Do you know what you're telling Jesus? Uh, shut that down. Uh, cut that off. I don't want to talk no more. And you just shut him down. You know, when you do that, what you are actually doing to Jesus Christ, turn over to Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. Matthew chapter 13, verse, make it 22, not 33. When Jesus Christ is talking to you and you don't care to hear what he has to say, uh, you become that murderer we were talking about like Cain was walking with Abel and didn't like what Abel had to say. And Cain did what to Abel? Killed him, rose up in the field. Jesus said, the field is the world. In that parable, he said, if you know this parable, you won't know nothing about the Bible. The field is the world. When you have your worldly mind on, your worldly mindset, this is what you do to Jesus. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 22, Jesus talks about, this is the parable of the sower. The sower sows the word. And some of the seed fell among thorns. And this is what the seed is. He also that receives seed, the seed is the word of God, among the thorns is he that hears the word. People come to church all every Sunday and do what? They hear the word. So they have the seed. That seed has in it the germ for their success the germ for their prosperity and blessing, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches uh, do what to the word? Choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. So let's see here. Jesus' word is telling you, walk in this way, do this thing, and you're angry. You got an anger problem and you don't want to turn the other cheek. You don't want to forgive. You want to hold on to that bitterness. So what do you do to the word of God that says, let there be no bitterness or clamoring among you? What do you do to that word that you heard on Sunday, that you read in the scripture, that the Holy Spirit brings back to your remembrance? What do you do to that? You might as well grab Jesus around the neck and do what? Choke. What's that say? What are you choking? The word. In the beginning was what? 
the word. The word was with God and the word was, what's that word? God. So when you go by your own thoughts and deny the word of God that speaks with you, that talks to you, you're denying Jesus. And you're denying the word was God, you're denying God. And you are actually, if you had physical fingers, you're really putting your hand around the throat of God the Father and his son, Jesus Christ, and choking the very life out of him. Why? Because your natural man is of its father, the devil. In the lust of his father, he will do. He was a what from the beginning? Murderer from the beginning. And he abode not in the truth. What does John 17, 17 state? Thy word is what? Truth. So when we don't want to hear God's word, we want to do what we want to do. We want to lust what we want to lust. We want to go where we want to go. We want to act the way we want to act. We're just, you might as well just look at it in the spirit, what you're doing to Jesus, choking him out, choking him out, choking him out. Can you imagine yourself? Just close your eyes and think about it. You grabbing Jesus by the neck and choking him because you do it daily when you're walking with a carnal mind. But the Bible says to be carnally minded is death. Death to who? Death, <laughs> death to Jesus. Chokes the word. And he becomes unfruitful in your life. And when you do that, the Bible says, turn over to Proverbs chapter one real quick. The last few verses in Proverbs, in the middle of the Bible, <laughs> It talks about when you do that, Proverbs 1, 30. Get a good running start on this here. Let's go back. Let's go back to verse 8. Verse 7 is better. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools don't fear God. They despise his wisdom. They despise God's instructions. Okay. God speaks to us as unto sons in the book of Proverbs, it says in Hebrews. He's saying to you, my son or my daughter, hear the instruction of thy father. Jesus says, call no man father upon the earth. Okay. I'm James Harold Warden Jr. I have a father. He's 83 years old this year. Uh, I'm not to call him father. Who You have one father, Jesus Christ said, and he's where God in heaven. That's how jealous he is. So he says, my son, hear my father, God the father's instruction, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Who is your mother in the spirit? If God is your father, Jesus is your brother, who is your mother? You were begotten of the gospel. Your mother is the gospel of the grace of God that teaches you to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and how to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking forward to the blessed hope, the rapture of the church. When you do this, honor your father and your mother. They shall be ornaments of grace unto thy head and chains of gold about thy neck. My son and my daughter, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lie and wait for blood. Let us lurk privately for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up, rob them alive as a grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall feel, we shall find all precious substance and we shall fill our houses with their goods or their spoils. Pass thy light in among us, join us. And we'll all have one purse, my son. God is speaking to you and I. Walk not thou in the way with them. We've seen a lot of Christians, born-again Christians, on January 6th, holding up flags for God and country. Okay? God and who? Country. Some have signed Jesus saves on January 6th. When President Trump says, if you don't fight like hell, you're going to lose your country. Let's go to the Capitol. Did those born-again believers stand up and let their light shine and say, no, 
we honor God, God and country, like the flag says. We're not going to do that. We're not going to go and fight with the law enforcement officers. No. What did they do? They did it right here. Cast in thy lot among us. We'll all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Not a born-again Christian should have been inside that capital. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to what evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain, the net is spread in the sight of any bird. It's a trap. They lay wait privately. They lay wait for their own blood and lurk privately for their own lives. It's a trap. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain which takes away the life, murders, of the owners thereof. Wisdom cries outside. She utters her voice in the streets. She cries in the chief places of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city. She utters her voice saying at the church, how long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And scorners, comedians, delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn at my reproof. This is the word of God screaming to us. Turn at my reproof. Turn away from your wicked ways. Behold, I will pour out my spirit of truth, my words of truth unto you. I will make known my words unto you. But because I have called you and you refused, I, God, have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But you have set aside or at naught all my counsel and you would have none of my reproof to repent. Uh, I, the Lord God Almighty, he's called the God of Isaac. Isaac means what? Laughter. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear comes. Oh, when those feral agents showed up on their door, uh, we have uh, footage of you going to the Capitol building. <laughs> when your fear comes as desolation and your destruction comes as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish comes upon you for hanging around people that you should not be hanging around, <gasps> guess what they do? Then, verse 28, Proverbs chapter 1, then shall they call upon me, but I, the Lord God, wisdom, Jesus made unto us wisdom, I will not what? I will not answer. Then shall they seek me early, but they shall not what? Find me. Why? I told you up front. Why? Because that they hated what? Knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. The Bible says out of his mouth comes what? Wisdom and knowledge. And they did not choose the fear of the Lord. What's the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord is to depart from evil. Fear of the Lord is to hate pride, arrogancy, the forward mouth, and the evil way. Because they did not choose to hate pride. They did not choose to hate arrogancy. We're gonna make history. They did not choose the fear of the Lord and eschew evil. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my words to reprove them from their evil way, to make them repent. Therefore, since they choked Jesus, they choked the word, therefore they shall eat the fruit of their own way. Look at people's lives. People are today where they are because they are eating the fruit of their own way, okay? Some people, you go over their house and you can see, hey, you're in retirement. You provided for yourself well. You did it honestly. You're eating the fruit of your own way. The Bible says it's good. That's a gift from God, okay? Some people in their retirement because they got it evil, like, uh, John D. Rockefeller uh, didn't do right by his workers and things. 
the Bible says he, God did not even let him eat uh, a meal. He couldn't keep a meal down. So he was like, I'd pay everybody, anybody a million dollars if you allowed me to keep one meal down. Because God says, oh, uh, he won't let you do that if you've destroyed the poor and hurt the poor. It says that in the book of Ecclesiastes. So he said, they're eating the fruit of their own way. Okay. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. The Bible says a lot of people will get old and rich and can't even enjoy the things they got. Why? Because they're eating the fruit of their own way. Remember when Ronald Reagan cast everybody out of the insane asylums and, and emptied all of the mental wards and said, oh, these people are okay. We're going to save this money and put the money back in the government, government coffers and give it to businesses. And, blah, blah, blah. and we had the streets flooded with mental health patients. How did he end up the same way they were? After he resigned, immediately he gets going before Congress and says, I don't remember. I don't remember. He started eating the fruit of his own way. I don't remember. Literally. I don't remember. And died batty. Why? Because he did not regard the poor. The Bible says he that mocks the poor reproaches his maker. He's eating the fruit. He ate the fruit of his own way. Okay. Was he born again or not? Don't know. The Bible says that God will reward you. You're wrong, and there's no respect or person with him. If you are wrong and you're a sinner, or you're wrong and you're a saint, you're going to receive the wrong, you're going to receive for the wrong which you have done. So the Bible says that he that does these things don't regard reproof, he wrongs his own soul. After you leave this body, the Bible says after death is the what? The judgment. You see people dying, uh, uh, the Costa Nostras and the, the mafia families, they die with lots of riches. They leave every penny here. Then they go stand before God, butt naked in their souls to give account of how they conducted their lives when they're supposed to be in discipleship unto him. And the Bible says, on that day, you will receive for the good and the bad which you've done. And God is no respecter of persons. But well, the Bible says, you know, eschew evil, put away evil from your flesh. So you'll do what? That's how you love your own soul. There's punishments for those who don't obey. You might be saved. You're in the family of God, but the Bible says God receives every son with what? Scourging. So when you come before him, what did you do? To whom much is given, I'm giving you the word of God, much shall be volunteered, no, required. I've given you this. Where are the sheaves? Where are the souls that I had my son shed his blood for you to tell the good news? Where are, how many are you bringing? The Bible says, he that goes forth bearing precious seed what is the seed? According to Jesus Christ in that parable that said, if you don't know this parable, you won't understand the scripture. It says the seed is the word of God. When you go out there bearing the gospel, what is the gospel? That Christ died for the ungodly. I'm ungodly. You're ungodly. But the Bible says in Romans chapter five, 4, verse 5, that, Jesus, uh, that to him that works not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly. That's me and you, ungodly. Our faith is counted for what? It puts us in right standing with God. And that reconciles us to God. It gives us his holiness and his righteousness so that we won't be visited with the wrath of God. But we'll be made what? Sons of God and be received with no condemnation. When we stand before him, the Bible says we will either be awarded gold, silver, precious stones, if your works were evil, it'll be wood, hay, and stubble. Those works will be burned, but you won't be, okay? You'll suffer loss. You could have got rewards for these works had you repented and did the, the first works, the good works Christ told you to do, be my witness. But if you just uh, did the things that you wanted to do to the satisfaction of your flesh, those works will burn, but you shall be saved. But if you do the works of God, telling people about Jesus, calling people 
to the knowledge of God, sharing your bounty, your blessings, getting people jobs, whatever you can do to help the saints. The Bible says, whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, knowing that of the Lord, you will receive a reward according to your own labor, okay? When you leave, the Bible says, blessed are the dead. Today's the anniversary of uh, Pastor Miles passing. Blessed are the dead that die in the Lord, for their works do what? Follow them. Pastor Miles got all of his children, not children, his children too, his uh, brothers and sisters saved. And they're what? They followed him. They preceded him. So on Judgment Day, bring uh, uh, Bobby J. Miles, come forth. Give account of your stewardship. Father, I was a sinner, but I was saved by the grace of God. And I went forth and I preached the gospel of Jesus Christ the best I knew how. I visited the sick in the hospitals. I did as you told me to do. I brought my brothers and sisters unto Christ. My mother and father are here today as well. And I tried to guide Macedonia Church in the ways that you instructed them to. And that's all I can say. Enter into the joy of the Lord, not because of what he did, but because he believed that Christ died for his sins and rose again. Flip that over. James Harold Warden Jr., give a count of yourself. You get, I get up there. Well, I was a pastor. I stole all the money I could. I did this. I did this. I did this. I do all the bad things. I suffer loss. Old, old works burn up. And the Bible says you'll be ashamed before him on that day if you didn't do those good works that he, he, that he ordained for you to walk in. You'll be ashamed on that day. But you shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Enter into the glory of the Lord. How do you want to be received? Do you want to be received because you let the mind and the thoughts of Christ be in you? He tells you how to think. If there be any virtue or praise, Think on things that are just, good, lovely. Meditate on the word of God. For in doing so, you will do what? Make your way prosperous and have good success. And with that, you can open your mics and talk. We're at the end of the Bible study. Anybody have any testimony or want to share anything or add anything or take anything away? This is the time to do so. Miss Jackie, you on tonight? Van Hook? Yep, there you are. <laughs> Just checking. She always tells me she's she's always on there. Okay, is day going tonight? Yes. <laughs> hey, how you doing? I'm blessed. I'm blessing you. Good. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Brother James. Um, everyone, um, I'm Dago Davis. Um, right after this, I have a prayer um, on Facebook Live. You can join me um, with that. Uh, I want to say um, God is good. I was um, happy to see the twins. <laughs> I was happy to see them and uh, our family reunion. Everything went great. Uh, also, um, I went to my 30th a school reunion and it was great um so with that um i want to end it with prayer father god in the name of jesus we come to you father we say thank you thank you father for brother james and teaching us and and leading us heavenly father and uh, now heavenly father we apply that everything that you have saying and trying to do the best to our knowledge heavenly father and heavenly father as the weekend um get ready to, to come and Bless those is, is still traveling and uh, blessing the children and even blessing the sick, Heavenly Father. Bless everyone's on this um on this live. And we ask in all these things in your son Jesus, my name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless y'all. Have a great evening. God bless. Awesome. Amen.